All right, how about this? This time we're going to do a system with a linear and a quadratic. Woo, this is going to be so awesome. This is going to be cool. All right, so this is no different from anything you've done so far. You know how to graph a linear. You know how to graph a quadratic. You know that the only way to solve a system of inequalities is by graphing because we just did it in the previous video. So what do we need to do? We need to graph each of these two things. So let's do it. Let's start with y is greater than x plus 2. Why did I start with that one? Well, because it's first. And because it's linear, it's easier, right? So let's do it. y-intercept of 2, slope, number in front of the x. That would be 1 over 1. So up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And then back the other way. Yeah, I, I could have put another point up there at the top. But it doesn't really matter. At this point, y is greater than, so I need to draw in my line. Remember that the line represents equals. This is just greater than, not equal to. So I don't want to include the points on the line. So I'm going to dash my line. Dash, 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 dash. Dash, 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 dash. OK, with the arrows. Please don't forget the arrows. This does go on and on forever. I know that's hard to think about, and it hurts your brain. But it still goes on forever, regardless of how much it hurts your brain. So it goes on and on forever in both directions. We do want to mark y is greater than. Our assumption is that it's probably going to be the top. Let's go ahead and check it. I'm going to put in 0, 0. So 0, I'm going to write that down so I don't forget that that's the point I tested out. 0 plus 2. 0 is greater than 2. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So therefore, 0, 0 is not in the true region. Therefore, I shade up above. OK, so there we go. Graph number 1, complete. We move on to the second one, which is a quadratic. And we're not scared of that anymore because we've done so many quadratics this year so many times that this is a piece of cake now. The first thing we look for is the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is at x equals negative b over 2a. So b was negative 2, so that would be negative negative 2. Please don't forget to substitute in parentheses, and it is a negative negative 2, over 2 times a, which was 1. That gives me a total of 2 over 2, which is 1. That means my axis of symmetry will be here at 1. Do, 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 do. Note that the axis of symmetry is dashed. I have always made it dashed. Why? Because it's not part of the solutions. Just like this dashed line is not part of the solutions. Dashed line always means not part of the solutions. All right? In this case, it's just the boundary. In this case, it's my axis of symmetry. All right? Then we take that axis of symmetry, we put it back in. So we go y equals, and just like with the linear, we're going to pretend for a little while that it's just an equal sign, just to keep things easy. We're just worry about worrying about that division line right now, that boundary between the solutions and the non-solutions. So we go y equals, and then I put in 1 for our x. So 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3. So that gives me 1 minus 2 minus 3 is 1 minus 2 is negative 1 minus 3 would give me a negative 4. So when x was 1, y equals negative 4. Because that's on my axis of symmetry, that makes it the vertex. I got my y-intercept because I can put 0 in for x. Remember, if x equals 0, that gives me the y-intercept. And so if I put zeros in, I get y equals negative 3. So that's my y-intercept. We're just cruising. I reflect that point over to the other side of the axis of symmetry. And then I find the x-intercepts. I find the x-intercepts by making y equal to 0. And so I put 0 in for y, and I got 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. How do I solve that? Well, I don't do it by moving the x over because I got an x squared and an x. There's two ways to do it. I can either factor or I can use a quadratic formula. It's completely up to you. But you know what? I'm going to factor because factoring is easier. Yes, quadratic formula always works. Keep that in mind. Don't forget the quadratic formula. Just because it's messier and harder doesn't mean that it's not as good. All right, quadratic formula always work. I can factor here. I put x's in the front. I know that because this is a negative, it has to be positive and negative because these two numbers have to multiply together to give me that negative 3. Now I need to come up with two numbers that multiply together to give me that negative 3, which will be 3 and 1. So 1 times x is x. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. So I got an x minus 3x, which sure enough does give me the negative 2x. So that checks out. At this point, this is the correct factorization. So I say either x plus 1 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. And I can solve each of those. x equals negative 1. And x equals add the 3 to both sides. 
and I get x equals positive 3. Please do show that. Please do work it out so that you don't mess it up when you actually have a coefficient here, which means that it's no longer just the opposite of that number right there. So negative 1 and 3. I put those points down. Doot, doot, and now I'm ready to draw my quadratic. And you know what? So it's not perfect. Let's see. Solid line or dashed line? I do want to note that. Oh, it's equal to, which means I can actually draw a solid line this time. I'm going to go all the way up. The reason why I'm going all the way up is because I want to be able to see my answers. Now, here, I don't know exactly where these things cross. Actually, yes, I do, because it would be 1, 1, over 2, up 4, over 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I did a pretty good job of that reflected over. And so I am going to draw the whole thing because I need to know which ones are solutions and which ones are not. Now, y's can be a little bit more difficult. It is less than, which means I probably want the negative y value. So it's probably the outside of my graph. Right, I've got the inside and I've got the outside with the quadratic, so chances are it's the outside here. But we're going to go ahead and test a point anyway. So I'm going to go 0 is less than or equal to, I'm testing 0, 0. In the original equation, I always go back to the original, minus 2 times 0 minus 3. And I get 0 is less than or equal to negative 3. And that is not true regardless of the fact that 3 is bigger than 0. Negative 3 is a negative number is always less than 0, by the way. So we got 0 is less than or equal to negative 3, which is not true. Therefore, 0, 0 is not shaded. I'm going to shade on the outside. All right. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my final answer together. Where is there both blue and red? Which solution, which ones, which numbers work for both inequalities? Well, we got this area right here up to the red line, not including it, up to the blue line, including the blue line. So all, all of this. But note. Over here, just blue. Here, nothing. Up here, just red. But then I cross over here, and I've got red and blue again. So I've got to shade this as well. So there's actually two individual regions, both of which work. Now, you could take the time to check that. In fact, I encourage you to do it. I'm not going to take the time in this video because it would bore you out of your mind. But just pick a point. Choose a point. I like to choose a point that at least has a zero in it. So pick a point. Test it in both, both inequalities. Show that it works. Same thing up here. Pick a point. It might be harder to get a point with zero because that's kind of out of the question here. But you can pick a point over here, five, eight. Put it in both inequalities. Show that it works in both. And that shows that both your regions are correct. That's it. It's exactly the same as what you just did with the linears, except now we draw a quadratic instead of a linear. We're still looking for the over overlapping sections because those are the sections that work for both of them. Just like when I found the intersection of two lines, I was finding the point or the points that work for both equations. Same thing here. Find the points that work for both inequalities. Where you see that overlap, that's the solutions. All right? That's all.